a quick word. Southwestern Slime Bowl Alert. Matt's last match with Savage. Our old friend Scott Bell is gonna be at ringside and Crystal's out recovering. So Clark could use a well-dressed Hercules out there as an equalizer if you would do the honors for your old friend. Sure thing. Anything for the star of the show, right? Hey, CEO, just tell him I'll be waiting by parking. Blue Zone. Yo, CEO. I'm gonna get changed out, but I wanted to say, I agree to your deal. I'll try the GM gig for a month, and then I'll make up my mind. Be good with that. You've always been a man of your word, Matty, my old man. He loves said about you. Ah, bless him, he misses the job. You know, when I told him you were retiring, Matty, the old man, literally hey, broke down Colin, crying. Come says on. he raised Don't you to this, be what man. you are in this business. You got no right to hanging it up so quick, Matty, you know it. Welcome back to the second half of this season premiere our WL Championship Wrestling. We're starting title. right out of the gate with no less than our WL Undisputed World Tag Team Champions. The Originals, defending the belts here tonight against Golden Al Barnett and Vic LaRue, the Canadian Cartel. And as if that weren't enough, my guest here at the broadcast table will be the 2023 RWL Manager of the Year. Manager is par excellence, Miss Sylvia Strom, a longtime personal friend of mine it's gonna be nice to catch up a little bit with miss strong the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the undisputed world tag team championship introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 488 pounds the Golden Al and Vic LaRue, they are former TV Tag Team Champions, but have never been able to beat John and Guy for the big belts. But tonight on the first card of the first day of the year, they can turn fortune around right here and topple a legacy leaving dynasty. And introducing the champions, accompanied by Silva. A combined weight of 536 pounds. They are the undisputed World Tag Team Champions. The Originals. Lots of titles defended at Memphis Million. But the Originals were involved in the Memphis Million Battle Royal. And so are defending the belts here on our WL Championship. And in just a moment, once the introductions are over with, We'll be joined by Sylvia Strong while we watch the originals compete. Their year's long reign as undisputed World Tag Champions began with those belts signifying the unification of the now retired Northern and Southern Tag Team Championships back in 2015. And so, the originals reign has continued unabated for an unprecedented eight years. Naturally, the world waits for the day those blink and the titles change hands. But the wait's been long and seems to be ongoing. Will it change tonight against the due to strike Canadian cartel? Cardill, as I freaking live and bug and breathe, you old war dog, how the shits have you been, you handsome son beach? This girl, it's been doing, what a year we had ourselves, and man oh man alive, the stronghold made some seriously huge strides last year, Blackwell beats Von Schmidt for the international belt, Gary Galaxy signed a deal with the stronghold, the insiders have been burned dogging the Guns Brothers for the TV tags, and all, while hanging, until the longest tag title reign is like ever. You, where's Mike Lane at? 
Desk looks empty without Mike on your right, man. Mike's moved up to front office work. He's head of the whole broadcast unit. Now I'm top man at the desk, and I do this show alone because it's small. Oh, nice. Got him an office gig. My man Mike deserves that shit. Tell him I love him when you see him next, will ya? So yeah man Wally, May 2023 manager of the year, and it feels fuggin' amazeballs, my guy. I bet it does. You know, the stronghold's got nothing but top drawer stars, big. It's what's made the stronghold get noticed this year more than any other. I mean the originals have always been at the front of your stable, but you sure made some moves that not only got you noticed, they brought you success. There's international champion Big Jake Blackwell, the man of the people, the German technician Stefan Von Berger, cruiserweight champ Gary Galaxy, and of course, my main money spinners right here, John and Guy, the originals, the undisputed world tag team champions. And let me just tell all you wonderful RWL fans that are out there watching on the Facebook and YouTube and shit. Thank you, all of you, for watching, following, sharing and all that goodish y'all do to make this channel keep bugging growing, so we can, you know, keep on keeping on, like they say, right? You people are the shiznit, for real, for real. Wally, seriously, where's Mike Lane at? Um, Mr. Hooper guy, Big Bird, I told you, so me, he's front office now, I'm training Johnny Bianco. He's not doing this with you no more man. Wow, that sucks donkey dongs. Tell him I said hi though. Yeah man, manager of the fucking year Wally. Well, let's talk about that shit a bit. So the CEO taps me one, but first, I gotta say hi, hello. Hello to who? To all the RWL fans watching out there, and wherever you're watching from honeys, thank you, we all love you here, even the mean girls love you honeys, it's like, RWL is like this big, sexy, Japanimation soap opera, isn't it? It's like a what? I'm sorry, Sylvie. I'm afraid you've lost me on this one. It's like anime, but everybody fucking trying to get nasty on the down low. That's how we got all these next generation stars running loose around here, also on the down low, hey, right? Hey, over here, look at me. May we should stick to the manager of the year as our comic here, Sylvia. Let me stop. I'm being stupid. Playing with you. Man, I fucking miss her fine fucking ass, Cardill. So like I was saying, before we got all off track and shit, O'Toole sends me a text, said he wants to see me in his little headquarters in the arena. Sue, like a good little fuggin' wage slave, I go looking for where he's at in the building, and I'm like, already pissed off, because I figure he's gonna start holding out his hand for more fuggin' money. Boy, they're gonna find the shit out of me for this, because you know the shit that goes on backstage, man. Um, so I guess you were excited These guys by charge the us a fortune to the, even the work prospect. here. I swear to God, Wally, the taxi medallion guys in New York City are the only ones with a sweeter racket. I mean, half, literally fucking half the money I make from the stable goes down the toilet to taxes and almost another 25% goes to fees from the company for the privilege of presenting the stronghold to RWL fans. Right, I see. It's the wrestlers, the in the ring, boots on the ground guys making the big bags cardill. Us little fucking peon managers. These guys just scowies every last little teeny tiny infinitesimal penny out of our people, so I don't know what's crawled up Collins as Wally. But why the actual, no, no. actual shit, is he fucking talking about making Matt Clark and Big Herc general managers? Sylvie, manager Wally, of the year. Wally, my we man, need to stay my ace boom here, Sylvia, My please. main mofa the Wally C. We've been, been doing this what, over a decade now, before there was all this high definitions, YouTube channel, monthly magazines and shit. We were doing, this job, on our own. You and Mike, you've interviewed me, and John and Guy what, hundreds of times over the years right? What's your point, Sylvia? My point, which was where I'm going with this Wally honey, is we, her whole, grown-ass men's and women's, who don't need a fuggin' babysitter, constantly trying to shove leashes up everyone's asses, know what wow. I'm talking about here, right? I mean, I love the shit out of Colin, but goddammit, leave us managers the hell alone, man. I just hope, Matt and Herc don't let the power turn them into a pair of assholes. Jeez. You know the deal, absolute power corrupts no foes absolutely and shit. So anyway, Colin says to me he says, Well congrats there, Miss Sylvia Strong, it seems, you've made manager of the year. Wally, I swear, I should have gone off on him right then, and said all the shit I just said on the air, that I probably shouldn't, right? Ah, the hell with it. I'm goddamn manager of the fucking year, Wally. And I'm not even hardly finished man. 
I bet you didn't know what with all the coming and going and shit. Miss Sylvie has been making more deals than Tony Pug and Montana. Is that a fact? I've signed a slew of new people. And Wally Honey, Witch O' Fine, Ass, every single one of the names is a goddamn shock to the system, babe. But I do kind of feel like we let the fans down at Memphis Million, us, the stronghold, I mean. Jake and Von Berger didn't beat the Guns Brothers, and then John, Guy, Jake and Gary, they all get tossed out of the Battle Royal. And Jake entered at Thuggin' number 29, man, I'm like, what the actual factual thug is going on here, yo. Let's face it, the stronghold was the drizzling shits that night. Last part of the year, and all my Sophie, wrestlers bombed out, well shit Wally. The manager of the I couldn't even hold my thuggin' head up on Saturday morning, man. Just a little. Concerned, why should I be concerned? Those aren't toddlers playing near a swimming pool, Wally. Wow. They're the undisfuggin' spewed world tag team champions. They don't even need me out there for this one. Hell, that's why I can sit here shooting the breeze with ya Wally. Aw oh man, fuck these guys. Northwestern Division Neanderthals. They got the same chance of being tag team champions as you got, seeing Frosty the Buggin' Snowman on the corner of Hellfire Lane and Brimstone Boulevard. Buggin' Zero, Comprende, Wally Baby, with the big ass sexy shoulders that go on for Buggin' Miles. Excuse me. Hey don't get me wrong, these canucks could kick the living shits out of, oh, Humberto and Garza maybe, but that's the originals they're fuggin' with. So let me write your match wrap up for you babe. Sure, Can I would you let me? Go for it. Here it is. And so, John Van and Guy Cormier, the originals, retained the undisputed World Tag Team titles in Pittsburgh in a local television match, and their opponents, Golden Al Barnett and Big LaRue, left the studio arena, tastefully wearing black, under both eyes. Do you like it, honey? I mean these guys have whipped everybody on earth three fucking times already. Hell, we're happy as fuck they're hiring new people for the boys to beat the brakes off of. That's the way, guys. Send them home to Mama Crying for wheat cakes with maple syrup. Fucking Canadian cartel my foot. Hey Wally, for real, now, that Riley Flash, the old fart that trained them and manages them again and shit. Ha, bro, he colored them fucking snowy walrus whiskers and that clown ass mohawk. Did you fucking, I mean did you fucking see him in the building here today? Wally I swear I thought I was gonna catch a grabber, like my heart was gonna stop I was laughing so fucking hard Wally. I really, I don't, I can't do just, just forget it. Hey, real quick, this Saturday's the first snarl part of 2023, City of Brotherly Love Baby, Philadelphia, and the debut of my main man El Supremo is the new GM, we are gonna see him, and I will be debuting one, of my two, brand new 2024 acquisitions, and I assure you it is destined to be a proper kick in the nuts. Again, Matt's one of the best, Herb too, well, they tag together all the time, but not to go too far off track, I love Matt like a brother, but I don't think he should even think about retirement. Well, yes, that's true for a lot of people. I wish, and I know a lot of you honest citizens of our social media audience, I'm sure they wish, and shit man, I know that even you, wish, that Matt Clark would unaccept the GM post, that he should unretire, he should let someone else manage Snarl, an American Supreme should make one more run for the RWL World Heavy Heavyweight Championship, my name's Sylvia Strong, and I approve this fucking message. There, got the elephant in the room, Wally. I mean, don't you agree, it's just way too soon to think about RWL without American Supreme as a headline superstar, am I wrong here? Be straight with me, man. But with all the Stronghold's new acquisitions for 2024, man, I am still not finished. I think I mentioned it at a house show a few months back because hey, I know you guys showed the clip somewhere, sometime between light summer and fall and shit. Ah, but what the fuck, anyways, I said it then, I got the boys here and they're on fire like usual, the insiders are on track to win, but, I'm thinking about Von Berger. Von Berger, you're not gonna release him or anything. He and Jake are good friends and shit, but they just are not getting it down as a team. Sure they fought a good fight with the Guns Brothers but it's just they don't got the chemistry like you see in front of you right here. So, I am thinking Von Berger should work single matches a while, cause I got that new Legends tag team coming in, and they start next week, and I thought, maybe kinda of formulate me a new team. Try out some of the new guys as partners, you know a little mix and match, a little pick and choose. I just signed a Legends Division tag team. Wow, that's a first. Hey, come on, give. Who it's are they? It's a fucking secret, so don't press me, Mr. Gates. I can't Wally Honey, not even for your fine ass. I am sworn to total secrecy, guy. But it's like I said, 
Now, I want me a ladies tag team to round out my little collection what of superstars. What about American powers then? American powers. Patty and Heath Coke. Listen, mister. It might have been their second, maybe third match together, before all that crazy ass tournament shit in August before them two started to hit big, right? They wrestled Genie's Femmes Futal to a draw. When it was over, Mimi Emerson shakes Patty Power's hand. I knew that very day Wally, I swear to fuckin' God if I'm lying, I'm dying, I said to myself I says, them two gals are gonna be fuckin' superstars. And, look, women's tag champs, and Heath Coates a triple crown now. And you think, I haven't been watching them like Cher used to cruise toys or us. Hells bells yes, I considered American powers, but they're just on the list of suspects. Sure it's an obvious choice, and that, my handsome uncle or Mr. Cardill, is why I don't make it. Not immediately, man, look at all the still unsigned talent in women's tags. Hinari Doku, Autumn Breeze and Cherie Roy, they were tag champs a minute before Crystal Fox came along, and you bet your sweet cakes, yes, Crystal Fox. I bet you were interested in them. Hell, I was in talks with them two weeks before Black Friday, I bet you didn't know that shit right there, but going back to American powers, well shit, they may figure they got so much pull that they don't need to be part of an organization like the Stronghold, and maybe they do, because that's an almighty lot of gold they're hauling around, am I right, my dude? That's quite true. Same with Jeannie Parker, she's an institution all by herself and she runs with Eddie Guns and his people. So maybe they can do without important me, but everyone in the Stronghold is both successful and happy. Let me ask you the question, question. here, Cardell. When has anyone ever quit my stable, like we see other people do around here? I mean thug. From the smallest peon with a promising career to the top-ranked thuggin' superstars, they change managers like Hollywood romances, like it's Pete Davidson, being passed around Hollywood like a box of Cracker Jacks. Well, answer me, when have you seen it or even heard well, of it? never. Thank you, handsome. That's right, you haven't, and do you know why that is Wally? Tell me! It's because I treat my clients with care, loyalty and respect, and most of all, most of all, I don't cheat them out of a dime of their money, like some of these other no-good, gutless mofug as we got skulking around being sketch. These are the douche nozzles that probably has Colin wanting to have GM standing guard over rage and snarl. So be, come Honest on decent now. people trying to do square business get screwed for it. And oh, boy oh boy, playboy. Gary Hart came back, manager for those washed up team chaos guys that John and Guy whipped on for weeks 10 years ago. It's a jungle wally, it's insanely competitive. Then you got the new Jack guys like MJ Ferentino, managing the Texan ladies, and he got the Vandal brothers too. See what I'm talking about, these kids ain't playing out here. So, I make sure all my peeps get their fair share, and their fair shake, and that is why, and how, I made manager of the year for 2023. I thank you most sweetly, Mr. Cardill. What's on tap for 2024? The future looks good for 2024 Wally my man. As you can see here, John and Guy are about to retain the titles on day one of the new season, and our neighbors to the north have had a nice ass whipping to keep themselves warm on the way home. The insiders may or may not return, Gary and Jake are up for title defenses this month, and you might even see yours too Lee, donning the ring gear once in a great while if, if you were to find such things of interest, you know. Listen Wally, it's been an absolute gas, I love you, please, let's do this fuggin' shit again really soon, huh? I'd love that. Good luck breaking in that Bianco kid I guess, cause he's no fuggin' Mike Lane baby. Hug that man for me when you see him brother Wally, and you know, you know I love you right. I will promise. Good night Pittsburgh, good night YouTube subscribers, good night John Boy. Here are your winners and still, the undisputed world. This note, it says, and so, John Van and Guy Cormier, the originals, retain the undisputed World Tag Team Championships. And Golden Al Barnett and Vic LaRue, the Canadian cartel, left the studio arena, tastefully wearing black under both eyes, fans. We'll be right back with more Matt action. We're continuing with Ladies Legends action with Stacey Keebler. Set to compete in the debut the of the daughter of the hot stock. Teal Piper makes her first on WL appearance. Making her way to the ring from Baltimore, Maryland. Stacy Keebler! Let's see what she can do. And from Salem, Oregon, Tia Piper.
And you have to respect the work this superstar has been putting in in order to meet the kind of challenge he faces tonight. Without a doubt, we've seen the hard work paying off. You don't find yourself in a match like this without dedicating your time into your craft. All that time the following is commercial in nature. RWL fans in the Philadelphia area, tickets for this Saturday night RWL snarl on January 6th at the Franklin Sports Center for the distastefully named RWL Insurrection. This January 6th are still available. Expected at the Franklin Sports Center will be Team Chaos, Dr. Zodiac and Haas Tull, returning with Playboy Gary Hart as their manager. Snarl Television Champion Scotty Priest is scheduled to compete, as are Snarl Tag Team Champions, the Psychodelics, the Freak and Wild Thing Wayne Tay. Also in Philly that night, hometown girl Danielle Heathcote along with Patty Powers in a return match with the Bell Council's Jody and Virginia. In tag action, Sylvia Strong will debut a surprise tag team acquisition to the Stronghold and all of this, in addition to the installation of American Supreme Matt Clark as RWL Snarl General Manager. Great seats still available at the Franklin Sports Center box office and online at TicketSatan.com. That Saturday, January 6th, Franklin Sports Center for RWL Saturday Night at Ringside Live. Stacy with some agility! Oh my goodness! Just strike it at will. Ouch! Caught her. Nice scoop. Oh, this fire is just wrenching away. You feel like Ah, oh, slipped through and escaped. That was pretty. Kick to the gut. Cranked around into a neck breaker. the mouth oh, relentless oh, enough already oh man he didn't need that eyebrow anyway stacy put a stop to that oh look at a torch of their opponent oh this isn't gonna be good oh man injury back right across the knee He'll look locked in. This is painful. She might be in some trouble now. And hanging tight, but beginning to show some wear and tear. Might want to think about picking up the pace a bit. Teeth in the third row. Definitely not where you want to be right now. Just carried like a rag doll here. Uh, Driven down face first. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Connects on a kick. Back elbow smash. Nothing fancy. Finish it off. Finds a counter for Stacy. Attacked in the midsection. She had it scouted. Jump right to the midsection. And look at this now. Yes, a play the submission hole. I don't know what choice she had. She's still got plenty of fight left in her, trying to counter, jumping shots. Drop shot. Beautiful. That's a few times now she's taking a hit up in that region. And a slap, too. Nobody home for that one. A oh, well measured strike. She sent flying into the corner. Get on there. 
Ascendancy. The entire women's division was watching this one, and she is the one to watch, guys. Here's another quick look at some of the highlights. Making his way to the ring from Dover, Delaware, weighing in at 285 pounds, Bulldog Brown. Brown isn't just scary looking, he himself is frightening. Built like the world's most powerful fire plug, Brown is literally the smallest man in the super heavyweight class, but he's still a super heavyweight. Add to the mix, he's one of the legend division wrestlers deemed ungovernable by most managers. Even Captain Lou Albano has vowed never to manage Bulldog Brower ever again. And that right there, fans, is what's welcoming Bob Backlund to the ring tonight. In this tune-up match with Brower, with Backlund defending his WWF Classic Championship, January 27th at the Coliseum. And his opponent, from Chaplin, Minnesota, weighing in at 234 pounds, Bob Backlund. We have one-on-one -on -one action on the way, and this one should be nothing short of amazing. I don't doubt that for a moment, Michael. In fact, I would go so far as to say this match might just steal the show. You can feel the electricity running through this arena. This is going to be some battle, one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano. Man, I never get tired of watching these guys compete. They're struggling for control right now. using the knee. On the mark. He's starting to stumble here. Looks like he may have let his guard down there for a moment and it cost him. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Cole. This is just a little bump in the road for him here. Nothing to worry about. The good news for him is that he doesn't appear to... Oh. This could be the turning point, Cole. Uh-oh, he's in trouble here. Here we go. Oh, my 
goodness, this hurts. Oh! I think this is the beginning of the end, Michael. Look at this. He let it go. Curious decision there, Michael. Looking for all the glory here. He kicks out before three. Wow. Incredible. Somebody get the hose. This guy's on fire. When this guy's on, look out. He might have it. Ooh, what impact. This could be the turning point. Oh, and he breaks free. But the damage might have already been done, Michael. Disqualified. We've got a cover. And how they survive that is anyone's guess. Yeah, it's going to take more than that to keep them down. This is it. Oh, nasty impact. I knew it was only a matter of time. This might be it. Oh, my. But he's running on fumes here. Does he have enough left in him to capitalize? This could be it. Cover. to win a singles match. Here is your winner, Cool Dog Brown. A big singles victory here tonight. Without a doubt, he is among the most dominant guys on the WWE roster right now. No doubt it was a good one. Here's another look. I remember this part very well. He ain't playing here. He's getting it done here. Well, Still can't said, believe I get paid to watch this amazing action. The man just blatantly, blatantly choked that Bob Backlund, forcing the official to stop the match. And it's a win for Brower, but a pretty nasty way to go about it. in a non-title exhibition. It's our double Memphis Million winner and double champ Warlord Santos. One-on-one -on -one with Psycho Sid Vicious. Saxton, get out from under the table. Sorry. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring... From West Memphis, Arkansas, weighing in at 317 pounds, Psycho Sid! One of the biggest and fattest in the Legends division is Psycho Sid Vicious, and he's gonna be hanged. What or what do you think you're doing, mister? Hey, Cardinal, you don't mind if I sit down, do you? Now, Fred, listen here. No, no, you listen. You listen, you diggle and get pencil in the geek. Everybody gets to talk around here. You let that rod talk for 15 minutes. My time. My turn. I'm here to talk about the greatest world champion in the world. 11 feet 4, 500 pounds. Warlord Santos, the greatest. And here he comes now. You lucky people are looking at the greatest. 7 4, 500 pounds. The Mexican monolith. Good times. Good time, Memphis Million Champion. And his opponent. From Who Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, weighing in no at 496 pounds, the super the heavyweight world, wrestling he champion, Warlord Gary Hart over Santos. like an old overcoat, you know what I'm talking about. Two of WWE's top stars ready to go here in one-on-one -on -one action. This is the match I've been waiting for, guys, ever since it was announced. I've been looking forward to seeing these two clash. Oh, 
this is gonna be great. Watch what he does. Watch what he does to Sid Vicious. And we're underway. Yeah. Looking at these two men, I don't think there's going to be anything traditional about this one-on-one -on -one matchup. And it looks to me Look like that. this entire arena is on its feet, and understandably so. See the, the size and the power. Oh, striking he looks at those, the way he imposes his will, even on a big guy like Ward, like this. Good this. slam! He's done. And the instinct from Psycho Sid on display. No, he reverses it. Leg drop. Look at this. No, shoulders up at two. I think more than that. Psycho Sid doing a great job of turning that around. Nailed it. Look at the way he imposes his will on Sid Vicious, and that's what he's going to do to everybody that gets in his way. I guarantee you. Psycho Sid is not looking so uh, good here. He might just have nothing left to wow. give, guys. He is hurt. I Ugh. can't really tell what his game plan was heading into this match, but whatever it was, it definitely hasn't been working. Nope, reverses it. Showing off some of his speed there. Now that got those shoulders on the mat. Too close for cover. He's still in this. What a stomp. Good grief. He's stalking his opponent from the top turnbuckle. Look out! Beautiful technique. All these things out there, all these pencil leg geeks, they're all talking about, oh, I'm going to get a piece of water. Long way yeah, down. Well, good luck with that, pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what impact. A torturous knee. Oh, boy, he is rolling. Here it comes. Just look Slam. what he did to Magic. And that hell of a cell. You haven't seen Magic Ross for a while. You know what I'm talking about? Ah. Two. And there you have it, Cardo. What a way One, to win two, a single match. It's over. I'm out of here. Here is your winner, Warlord Santos. There's no doubt about it. That's a big pinfall win right there. And talk about displaying a never-say-die attitude. It was as if winning was the only option here tonight. Guys, it sounds like we can all agree that was an extremely impressive win. A lot of action in that match. Let's have a look. I remember this part very well. And this is how he ended it. Years ago, I made a promise to Matt Clark that I would be there the day that Psychotic Redneck had his last match because I wanted to see it. Maybe even have a hand in it. To help write the epitaph on the gravestone of his career. Well, kids. Christmas came a little late to Casa Bell, but it came just the same. See American Supreme is no more. When the hero of the short bus kids lost the World Heavyweight Championship after six insufferable years to my old friend the traitor Warlord Santos, that whole American Supreme thing? That came to an end, Matt Clark is no American hero. He's a product. 
He's a corporate construct. He's those idiots you see at tax time, in their stupid Statue of Liberty costumes. And when Santos beat Supreme? All that hype was gone. So what's a former washed-up world champion to do? Matt Clark, do you remember me? Cause I remember you, you most protected champion in RWL history. More coverage, more protection than the President of the United States, yeah. But that's all gone now, Matt. It's just you and me on the last gunfight on your way to Boot Hill, yeah. Fans, some last-minute chicanery has gone on here, originally. It was to be Larry Zabisco facing American Supreme Matt Clark. But through some clearly questionable feelings backstage by DeShort, caught by Scott Bell, American Supreme is now in an RW All-Southwestern States Championship match with Randy Savage from Bell's Southwestern Division, and Bell is hyping it to be Matt Clark's last match. Apparently, Bell is not ready to abandon his decade-long vendetta with the new Snarl General Manager. Introducing the challenger from Smithfield, North Carolina, Weighing in at 265 pounds, the All-American Superstar, Matt Clark. Man alive, look at the face on American Supreme. He is furious at having been shanghaied into this match with Randy Savage, who Bell's chosen because of their long and heated history 10 years ago. When Bell was RWL commissioner, the running the league like a Soviet-era gulag, with Savage, Hogan, and the dreaded NW as his stooges. He is the Alliance Southern Western Champion, Macho Man, Randy Savage! No doubt. Bell is expecting Savage to humiliate and discredit American Supreme, but no way, no way at all, can you dampen the spirit of Supreme's fans, who would love to see Randy Savage lose that Southwestern title to Matt Clark as the ultimate middle finger to the petty childish to short.
and draw. And look at this, everyone's angry. Bell fails an embarrassing Clark, who just fought his champion to a draw. And I'm sure Matt is furious he didn't take Randy Savage down. This entire thing was a mess that shouldn't even have been allowed to be sanctioned by the match committee, last minute or not. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Championship Wrestling will return soon. But please join me and Johnny Bianco Saturday, January 6th for Snarl. Insurrection, Wally Cardell here, saying thanks, good night and be safe.